that. Let's speak now to Karen Floyd. She's former chairman of the South Carolina Republican Party, also a former prosecutor and a judge. She's in Spartanburg and now. Very good to talk to you. Thank you for your time. Do you have a sense of how terrified, frankly, some parts of the country are by this victory? I mean, you know that the white supremacists were in evidence at his rallies. The KKK endorsed him officially. They were out celebrating in public in full regalia in North Carolina this morning. Many African Americans very nervous, many LGBTQ people. He has a lot of reassuring to do, doesn't he? You know, he does indeed, but the, I'm a fact-driven person and a data-driven person. And what's been most interesting to me is that the rhetoric that I've been hearing is not necessarily borne out in the exit polls. And what I mean by that is the numbers based on gender, race, um, some, of the, um, some of the divisions that were previously noted by your um, correspondent really haven't been borne out. The divisions tended to be rural, urban, and it also tended to be on education. So people that were working hard and that felt hopeless, kind of the working class, the working class, um, they voted for Trump, and the more educated, the more highly skilled voted for Hillary Clinton. And that's a very different paradigm than what's been portrayed by the mass media. And frankly, I think the media had this election wrong in their forecast for Ms. Clinton. And I can give you many, many antidotes that transpired over the last two years that really underpin this idea that what really happened in the United States of America was no different than what happened in the UK with Brexit, and that people were concerned about jobs, employment, hope, and their futures. And so consequently, they went with the person that they felt could make the biggest change for our nation as opposed to someone that was deemed more status quo. So it's a very, very complicated mixture that everyone wants to peg on these um, arbitrary divisions like gender, like, um, albeit those are issues, but the way the numbers have borne out did not necessarily break according to those paradigms. Yeah, Karen, I mean, all credit to him. He has rewritten the rules on political campaigning, hasn't he? It used to be elections were fought on the centre ground. Not anymore. This is a man who offended large chunks of the population, absolutely turbocharged his core vote. Core politicians had just lost touch with so many voters. So what we learned in this is um, something that no one really wants to talk about, but much of politics in the 21st century because of the advent of social media has to do with the theater. And this is a person that legitimately understood message and the idea of not necessarily bringing people in an educatory fashion, but more from a provoking fashion. And at the end of the day, he won. And so you can malign him, you can praise him, um, but he obviously understood that people needed to hear something. And he harnessed an anger in this country, um, a dissatisfaction, a hopelessness maybe, and um, did it in such a way that propelled him to the presidency, something that many of our media in the United States of America didn't contemplate or anticipate for that matter. Karen, so many women voted for him, despite what he revealed about how he views women, how he's treated women, and the long line of women accusing him of assault. Hillary Clinton spoke in her concession speech to all the little girls watching. What message do you think all this sends to young women? You know, case in point of what I said, um, the previous correspondent was talking about the breaking on gender and race, and um, it really didn't go quite that way. Um, as you know, based on the exit poll, splits were really those women that were deemed to be more educated tended to go with Miss Clinton, whereas those that were more working class um, tended to go with Trump. And there really was not the, the polarization of numbers. Your question to me is more direct, though. Your question is, um, how do these young women um, now um, reach for this glass ceiling or breaking through the the glass ceiling. And what I would say is I think that um, it will happen and um, that they see a woman like Miss Clinton who has certainly accomplished a great deal and hopefully they will feel that they can reach as far um, on issues. If, if you strip everything away though, uh, what 
Mr. Trump had that Ms. Clinton did not have and a passion that really drove numbers that um, were not expected. Karen Floyd, thank you very much.